Hi, I'm Seamless, and today I'm going to show you how to make this sound. Yeah, brassiness. Anyway, this is a Harmer, and I had I had avoided um doing my instrument experiments with Harmer because it's a little bit easier to get certain results with Citrus just because of the nature of actual FM. But with uh, understanding now how this particular choice works, using turning randomness onto the prairie and voice, uh, and what the options now give that to me, what the options now give that to me? Holy crap! What? Wow! What that means now is that uh, I get an easier time making instruments because it's easier to get that sort of realistic complexity that's within a controlled range. That's just the easiest way to do that now. And this enables also interesting things, which is to play high notes in ways that aren't so very viscerally damaging or high CPU cost, because that is a danger about citrus. But let's talk about the sounds. So I am using four voices in unison right now. And there are different unison voices, and they all have basically all the things that are on and random and then doing their deal. But listen to what one voice sounds like by itself. Like synthy, clearly, but not super far from being just the primary thing itself. In fact, it seems guilty of just being a little too much like the primary thing. Of our target, like trying to be a brass. I say target, but I actually did try to start off making a string to do this. And getting here and not being able to get to a string happens pretty frequently when I try to do that, when I try to make strings in general. And that's because there's some differences in the way that the processes work, but the results are either this rigid tuned experience, which is, you know, what metallic things sound like, or it's going to be a stringy experience with this sort of delayed motion to granular feel and there's just lots of ways to achieve that um and they're not very easy to do in harmony <laughs> and but the brass stuff is cake um and this just uh, makes it sound easier and cooler plus there's uh, there is some special stuff in here what i'm doing with the prison uh you can't even really see that in there uh, oh yeah because it has that so that's not the prison that's the, that's this i'm using the frequency mode and the phaser to sort of do that that rip effect that brass instruments can do. And uh, that looks a lot like what just FM is. And essentially, that's, yeah, it's FM. But I'm, I'm doing this trick by way of getting it out of the phaser. And I'll show you how that works. If I turn on B. Yeah. I'm also doing a reverb, and that reverb isn't here. Turn it off for a bit. We go back, we'll hear what that sounds like without reverb. Um, so... If I turn on the phaser and we go to the uh, custom shape, this shape uh, shows us essentially the action that's going to go on in there. And the fastest it'll move is that fast, just based on that. And if I want to move faster than that, what I need to do is I need to make the shape itself twice as fast. So now one shape is now twice the value of the shape. And you can just keep doing that and doing that. And over here, I did that a lot. And I didn't have snap on in here either. And I just kind of wanted to see what the results of that would be like. And uh, with all the changes you can make, because what frequency mode does is it applies the motion information that normally is applied to the volume cascading of the individual uh, uh, harmonics and applies it to individual pitch. And you can see that it doesn't result in an even response, but you can make it result in an even response. And you can make it more like literal FM. And this is actually even more literal FM than actual FM going on inside Citrus, because Citrus is doing phase modulation to make that happen. And there's some sort of extra, some nonsense about what that means implies, but you can see how this shape is actually the shape that's being presented here. And that's not how Citrus works. But it is how like hardware works when you put like an oscillator into another oscillator this is what it looks like and um so you get to have that power in here but there's some drawbacks um which is that if you don't have your grain and oh, am I, am I, am I, am I, good 
you need to have uh, your time pretty high because this becomes something that moves pretty fast. I'll show you what happens when it's moving quickly and doesn't have the grain handed for it. So yeah, if you want to keep going faster, you just keep making the the wave denser. Ideally, you want it to be even if you want it to actually like be tuned, but it's not going to be super duper tuned, and the speed parameter can't be mapped directly inside Harmer. So if you want it to be keyboard track, you can do that by creating a separate uh, Fruity Envelope controller, which has that keyboard tracking as a thing built into it. But then, you know, if you're doing it as a patcher, that's kind of whatever, but uh, it's a little bit weird trying to get the tune because this is not really meant to do this, is it? Uh, yeah. So, but if I didn't have the grain all the way up, it's so kind of like janky it gets. Like, for all we know, that kind of sounds cool in certain configurations, but if you want to be more realistic and as, as high as it can get, uh, well, all I can get, as high as it can get is half, is half a millisecond, which is not, like, literally perfect, but considering this amounts to additive FM, it's kind of any percentage of this is rad. Wow. Um... So that's what's going on in the core of the 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 the, the rip sensation. So you can do your like. Okay, this is what it sounds like with that reverb. So I also have um, filter action going on, right? And here's a high pass filter and a low pass filter. So essentially, I'm doing a overall a band pass, but there's some there's they're moving together, but they're not moving together. And they're also being velocity tapped. Oh, this, this one's not being velocity tapped, but this one is. And uh, I'm not randomizing them. They're keeping together in this in this case. They're staying solid. Now, think about it. That might actually been needed to be the thing I need to do to make it less uh, super cloudy. Well, it's going to make it cloudier, but I need to make it less, actually. Like here, that, like that kind of unnecessary synthy feel. I think I can alleviate that right now by coming in here and doing this. So, this is the benefit of this whole strategy. I have all these unison voices, and I did not go to unison index mapping right now. This isn't unison index mapping. This is just regular old random. And in normal life, what this would mean is that the one filter parameter we're looking at for the entire side of the plugin we're on would be the thing jumping around itself between these positions. And the randomness is how that works. But because we turned on that and this, uh, this means that now each voice is going to have one of these that's calculated individually. So, ha <laughs> ha So now this little tiny bit of offset, these, this is as if like it's like once there, once there, once there, and once there. And they're in different positions every time. So they're kind of close together, but you know. Nah. Uh, so, uh, someone in the comments of the last video actually mentioned something interesting about the combination of the filter states, which is that if they're not together, that the overlap causes certain ringing tones that, uh, that adjusts, that messes with the thing. Messes with, um, well, phase cohesion and all this other stuff. And this would actually be absolutely true if these were real filters, but they're not. This is additive processing, which means that it's not even really, it's not a filter at all in the first place. It's just level information and overlapping on these harmonics which is to say that that particular issue cannot happen. Um, even if I do things like make them different subtly, like with these unison changes and whatnot, and I have prism on as well, and I, I change the shape of the prism itself, which is just whatever. If you're unfamiliar with what prism does, what, this is essentially what you, the unison voice mapping does, but just for one unison voice, because the unison voice mapping also has this basically exact same window. And uh, so regular unison pitches all of everything all together, up and down, separate apart. Like in terms of the fact that what you do with unison is create pitched duplicates, pitched duplicates of your voices, all detuned and dephased, so that it sounds like a crowd, and not just a single unified item. That um, is all well and good, but because we're in additive land, what that means is that in unison literally unison to make one voice move you're really making this crowd of 500 harmonics move and that also means that you could you can move them differently and that's what this graph is this is saying that cool it's gonna go, go up and down a pitch but uh, not only so much for so many other ones and this has some interesting ridiculously cool impact on stuff mostly it it um solves like what would normally be like a year of processing with regular subtractive based stuff because getting that sort of phase screwery 
But in a way with things like, oh, hey, cool, I can just choose for the low end to be kind of more together than the rest of it so that it doesn't get as screwy and therefore it's balanced and saves you from having to do things like extra layers. Uh, that's why I really love additives in this is so much. Even when I do FM stuff, I'm really still just doing additive stuff. Yang, man. So Prism, same thing, but core voice. This is the this is the main pitch thing that then gets, well, I mean, you can tell it where here. I don't think I can tell it to actually be a unison split. Wow, that's cool. Um, but what it means is with, the, with this, blah, 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 blah. this one has a plus and minus though. It has up here on this side and then down there on that side. And in the articulator, what that means is that you can have it go up or you could just tell, okay, cool. Now we're going to go to the other value, the flipped value. And on the random mapping, it's jumping around a bunch on whatever. But also in the unison index mapping, I am I am setting them to begin the opposite. I'm and they're randomizing in between each other, so they're going everywhere, everywhere anyway. But at no point are they ever going to be aligned. Is sort of the point. Um, yeah, they probably could be. I don't know if that actually had any impact on the routing in the first place. So I, I made a comment. Oh, I just realized the answer to the thing I was just about to say. Wow, it's like a Doctor Manhattan moment. Um, uh, okay. Yesterday, I was saying a theory about if this is going to change pitch in this direction, and then this is the other thing, because the whole point of the, this graph, uh, this represents the first octave of harmonics, which is no it's just the fundamental. And the next octave of harmonics, next octave, next octave, next octave. And this is what the octaves look like when they're taken down, taken down, sure, into individual harmonics, right? Here's bass. Two guys, next next octave, next octave, and you can see a pattern of the increase in size and count to the point where this last octave has half of all of the harmonics. And that uh, this is what the normal sort of distribution of Hertz individual harmonics looks like. And then this is what it looks like when it's valued to notes, what this, this view sees. So here's our first octave, here's our first octave, here's our second octave, here's our second octave, there's a harmonic in there, so that means this part of the graph does something. This did shit. Like, there, there's nothing in between this graph, there's one harmonic here, one harmonic here, and one dead center. And, or maybe a little bit up, I don't know what. But so that means, like, this whole action did nothing. And then, like, all of these other junks get closer and closer, but they exist more within the octaves. So really, I should have been doing the opposite intensity and density. But whatevs. Um... The situation was not necessarily to actually create anything specific, but just to create literal change. And then this, my experiment was to say, cool, if I then did the opposite of that, would it cancel? And the answer is no. And the answer was actually pretty fairly clear why it would do that, which is because uh, putting something up in pitch has more of an impact on the result than it does to move something lower in pitch. Because the thing higher in pitch oscillates faster than the thing lower in pitch does. Duh. <laughs> and so that means um, if I change this thing, it could be up high pitch. This thing is now a value that's changing real quick. And if I put this on lower pitch, it's going to be a value that's changing real slow. And if I combine the two with them, then no way is that going to cancel in a way that really releases anything. And um, also because I'm not starting in opposite phases and that kind of thing. But I knew even if I did that, even if I started in opposite phase with the intention for it to go into opposite phase and then resolve into cancellation, that wouldn't work out. But then I was looking at this graph while I was getting ready to say that, and uh, uh, the freaking uh, solution occurred to me, which was, nope, not this graph. Yes, that graph. Nope, this graph. Uh, to which occurred to me was that uh, I, it doesn't, it can't be set directly this way. It actually just has to be an offset. It has to be just a little bit backwards, but not as fast backwards. So that, or the other way around. Yeah, there you go. That's the offset. The higher version of it can't go as high as high as the one that goes low, and then, then yeah. But I gotta experiment with that. Do that later, and then now I'm imagining doing that later and planning the experiment. And like that was what I meant by the Doctor Manhattan moment was that literally everything I just said popped into my head at once, and that was something. Um, okay, uh, but this was here to cause an effect, and what the effect was to cause was d essentially this desire of realist realism and complication that was still so close to rigidly tuned um in real life that's accomplished by the subtle ridiculous imperfections on the surface of steel items like metal is very rigid and regular and it's nice but it's not completely perfect no surface is and the imperfections 
are small enough that they can oscillate and resonate, and they're also rigid enough because and, and they're metal that they don't change shape, which means that however much power comes in them is going to put out the inharmonic tone with sustainable energy. And that's how you get the, 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 like, the, the noise wash that comes out of harmonics inside a brass instrument. But um, doing that in a synth is interesting because, yeah, you can get there with what I just described in terms of just their super high frequency uh, FM, but the results of doing that are not necessarily very super high frequency. The results are, are like, okay, cool, I used a, like, a, a 40 kilohertz tone and a 52 kilohertz tone and multiplied that by like a 75 kilohertz tone, and the result was an action that had an impact at 10K. That's, that's kind of what happens. And the, that's sort of the order, like, fractal problem of, like, that's so that's so many orders higher than where we are now, but it still came back to action where we are. How can we see the pattern to control it? And because uh, that's what I have to do because I don't have access now to the high-frequency realm anymore because additive stuff is only going to put things where they're going to be. And Harmony in particular doesn't put stuff higher than 15K. It just doesn't. And a lot of that, so that means that I have to put in the higher order of the of the fractal here now without actually having the mathematically correct generation. And that's where the prism comes in, making all that crap happen and that phase relationship happen. But also in a way that's like mo moving in time and related with the rest of the stuff to make it feel like it's part of the fractal, which is what makes a thing feel realistic. Because like we, even if we have a super hard time figuring out why the stars move around the sun the way they do. Eventually, we did. <laughs> Eventually, we figured it out. We 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 could feel the fractal, and we know there is one. And we can we can work that crap out. Um, and that's something that we can do. That's a thing that humans are nature like naturally sort of. I don't know, not necessarily tuned to. <laughs> but it has to do with sound design. Is that um, we're not necessarily totally doing that because, like I said, we can't. We don't literally have the accurate generation to do that in terms of, like, generating those high tones. But we can do, like, a fake kind of 2D animation as though we did. And that's basically what we look at when we see a 2D animation of a 3D thing is that we don't actually have the 3D thing. We're just showing you what could be visible from this 2D perspective. And that junk of, like, the breakage and also... So also, also, just to give up the thing, like the reason we're seeing the voices be different, weird all the time, is not just because of randomness, but because Harmer only shows you one voice at a time. And right now, I think it only shows you the first voice. Um, and in the unison index mapping stack, just so you're clear, I have to see that over here. I have one here. This is the first voice. This is the second voice. This is the third voice. This is the fourth voice. And by default, the panning orientation is that this is left and this is right. So we're we're looking at the leftmost channel right now when we see what's actually happening inside the uh, visualizer. Yeah. So on top of creating those changes in the fractal, uh, that involved changing uh, things in the local EQ. The difference between the local EQ and the regular EQ, which I changed both, is that this action follows the note. So you can see how like there's a sort of bright range following the note. Part of that is that the filters are also key tracked and whatnot, but also that's just like there's an, there's an action. And part of that action is that I lowered the fundamental. This is the fundamental tone right here. And I lowered it to be about like the same like visible level. We can't see it right now, but if we were to look at it at um, an actual like level analyzer, I, this, this normal sort of even level is the, this fundamental tone being quite a bit higher. And bringing it down a bit, is now it's going to report an amplitude that's even to this, but that's not like to our minds going to make it feel as loud as it. It's going to make it feel quieter because of stuff. And this is truer of real things that they don't have completely even perfect power in the hard things. And the hard things are very high frequency fidelity and very low frequency fidelity. So just starting there, do that. And then this is mostly just a, I just change stuff in tone kind of thing. And like I did have a, a reverb on when I made some of those choices. And that reverb was pretty basic. Um, I originally tried doing that with just in here, but yeah, I got compression. This thing is basically OTT when you turn it on to burning. It's pretty great. I have to turn it down even on the highs. Uh, yeah, that's with the highs turned down. We've been listening to this whole time. Um, and then distorting it is great because of that stuff I said before about the brasserie. Uh, that, and like, that's a metal property in general. And th to that end, it applies to strings, which is fun. Um, that 
parts of it are actually kind of like sign shaping itself a bit, and it uh, it shows up as distortion in the in the ways that the harmonics present. Um, so that's helpful because of the harmonics that we don't have in terms of harmony not generating the high enough ones, especially for high enough notes. But it also is helpful for sort of gluing and coming together the multiplication for all that fractal nonsense we talked about. And then here's the phase of doing that frequency stuff that we demonstrated before earlier. And then a lot of the parameters are the ones that are having the randomness attached to them so that they, uh, like the differences between the four voices, like you heard the one voice by itself. It basically did the job. It sounded like an instrument. So four of them together this way basically sounds like a section. We have, that going for us, and if we put our verb back on. Yeah, if I had that in the background of just some song, you would not question that to be trumpets. Um, and I've, been, I've been focusing on some of the higher ones, because the high in this particular orientation, the high notes are the ones that perform the best. They, they sound the most, the most realistic. Low notes don't sound bad. But they do have that very perfection edge to them. And I am using a lot of the methods that I would normally fix this with to do some of the other effects. And that's why they're they're kind of like this right now. Down here it gets more like, it sounds like a bassoon. Now it starts to sound like a trumpet again. It is, so something else about realism with instruments like these, it, it does also matter about how you play them. Like, you just heard me kind of try to play an arpeggio there, and that sounded the least realistic this entire time. And that was because I was deliberately avoiding doing things that sounded unrealistic. And you might want to still, like, perform them in that way, in a way that you imagine you'd be playing them on a keyboard if you were doing the same things that the player were doing. They were doing it. But that, become, that becomes interesting. Um, the first thing I tried doing was to just do legato. Kind of fun, sort of sounds like that lead instrument from Loki. Uh, if you do a long enough one, it sounds like kind of trombone. And when you get that involved, that's all just about control. How well can you swing the thing around in a way that in any way sounds whatever kind of realistic or not that you're trying to do? That's why you hear me do lots of like chords. It, like, really, and also, I haven't even, like, uh, the volume envelope I have on here is somewhat specific, but the attack is real short, so it's not a lot of, like, it doesn't not sound like an instrument, but it starts to sound more like an N64 instrument than anything real. chords uh so moral of the story there is it is a bit of a two-part process not just the sound design and the mixing to make it kind of feel real but also the writing that it not not even just that the literal notes in any way are kind of like i could put this on sheet music and a player would know what to do because your plugin might not so that means you might need to plan the design of it in such a way that you got like you got your macros ready so you got things like this and also like So this guy was attempt attempting to be like uh, I have I have velocity linked to these filters, among other things. And the issue with them is I, I wanted to get that kind of dark to bright build that uh, brass instruments can do. And I'm also trying to get playability out of a keyboard. So the the velocity ma mapping and the X mapping because now. Moving it around, it, gets, it's, it makes it feel fakier. That's one of those things that, because it's not <clears throat> doing the fractal right, the motions don't add up. And that's 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 honestly why we care about the fractal at all. <clears throat> if I were just going to refer to it as that. 
uh, the the long process of interconnected sound design choices that add up to a physical model, the fractal. The reason we do any of that is because we want to get to a position where we just play it naturally and it responds naturally because it is natural. Uh, versus what well, what I described before, which is essentially keyframing, where you're you're like you're planning on where you're going, you're gonna tell it what kind of articulation to be based on like how you know you can shape it to be there, arrange it, do that, and then not write anything that can tell us I'm wrong, and that's how you make stuff like this work. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's make sure I didn't miss anything important. Building it. Um, I didn't use the pluck. I have randomness on. So the, the actual first thing that the whole reason I even stumbled onto this finally was that I really wanted more than one of these. Um, Cause I could have this on turn on and use it and it would have perfect copies of whatever this spat out of and not four of them for different ones. Uh, Cause I got real into polysynthesis with hardware and uh, mimicking it in, in digital ended up being a little bit of a harder task than I expected just because stuff doesn't immediately, in, in, immediately have that kind of per voice functionality, but here it is with Harmer and also more newer plugins. But um, so that's why I'm having a lot of fun messing around with this now. Uh, oh yeah, so let's go back to this because this is a good way to make sure I, miss, I didn't miss anything. I like how it shows. Oh yeah, phaser mask. Uh, so this is um, this guy. So in normal world, when the phaser is a filter. <laughs> Still doing it. Uh, what the mask will do is tell it not to affect a certain area. It's not note tracked, so it's the whole the whole range tracked. And uh, when it's in pitch mode, that means the effect is lessened. It's not gone unless you tell it to be gone sharply. See how like it did the fade. The, the, this is the the pitch apply applied fade, the pitch applied. Yes. So the value of doing this here is that, and this is why I was saying before that additive F admin any percentage is valuable just in its own right. Because what this gets to be is a density determined by the sort of requirements so here when i play really high notes that are that can survive that damage they get the damage but then when i play the low notes even when the damage is on their their low end rigidity is protected but their high end damage is on and this is something that is just happening in live where because we're not we're not fming a, a waveform we're fming individual harmonics we can tell the individual harmonics to have a different fm intensity oh Oh, like this is just the tip of the iceberg of how cool this could be. This isn't even the tune version. Like, damn, the future of that's gonna be hardcore. Um, mm -hmm. and you, that actually, I'm pretty sure is the last bit of what made this sound. Um, if you have any questions about it though, uh, feel free to ask. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. As usual, have a nice day.